White Coolies, dedicated to those nurses who did not return. Sister Davis. Missing. Sister Hempstead. Missing. Sister Garden. Missing. Sister Raymond. Missing. Sister Jeffrey. Here. The next excitement in the camp came yesterday. There really isn't a boring moment here. Something's always happening one way or another. All the afternoon we'd been watching the hay-hoes and the japs unwrapping hundreds of packets of cigarettes from the American Red Cross boxes. The boxes we'd seen arriving a couple of weeks ago. They were lighting cigarettes, half-smoking them, then throwing them away only to light fresh ones. It made our blood boil to see it. Look at that. That's the third one that hay has lit in five minutes. <gasps> Makes me see red. I wish the smoke had choked them. I wish they'd get nicotine poisoning. I wish they were trick cigarettes and blow up in their faces. What you mean, Shorty, is that it makes you mad to see... Hey, girls, hang on to your hat. I've got the most astonishing news. Don't tell us, Mitz. Let's guess. We're going to Muntock again. No. We're, we're going to be issued with hats and shoes. No, Shorty. We're... we're to be ready for the inspection of all inspections. No. Will you all be quiet and let me tell you? That's the umpteen cigarette that monster's had in about five minutes. Have you seen the way everyone's hurrying into our cigarettes, no. Mitz? Oh, I can't be bothered with that now. Listen, we're all to go to the guardhouse at 5.30. Oh, Struth. Now what have we done? Nothing. They're bringing in the stuff from the Red Cross boxes, what's left of it, and we're divided out between the British and Dutch. What? what? No. I can't believe it. Oh. Do you mean we're actually going to get some of the things? Well, I'll be done. Well, uh, what are we standing here for? Come on, let's get over there. Yes. It's getting late. <laughs> Oh, what to do? Let's go over here where it's all out of confusion. I've lost track of what each of us has ended up with. I'm mm. going to sit here and count my spoils. Twenty-two cigarettes each, right? Check. An inch of chocolate. Growing a beard. Check. <laughs> but beard or no beard, the glorious smell mm. of it. Oh. Half a cup of powdered milk. And four little loaf sugars. Oh, hang on. I can't find one of my sugars. Oh, it's probably under your cigarettes. A spoonful of coffee essence and a spoonful of butter. Oh, butter. Real butter. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of it worked out at a small packet of soap powder between three of us. Well, that's a godsend. Yes. And what did Mrs. Hinch say? A half-pound tin of jam, a small tin of meat, and one of salmon between 15 of us, wasn't that it? That was it, oh. yes. It's only small, but it's all wonderful, isn't it? Be it ever so old. <laughs> yeah. Well, now, will everyone please be quiet? Why? You going to make a speech, Shorty? No, Jeff. I'm going to eat my piece of chocolate, and I don't want to be distracted. Wait a minute, girls. What for? I've been waiting for years for this, and I'm not going to wait another minute. <laughs> I think we should eat a toast. Oh, what are you talking about, Mavis? Well, we can't drink a toast. We haven't got anything to drink, but we can eat one. Well, what are we toasting, Mavis? Now, don't go and make a long-winded speech, Mavis. No, it's... It's just, thank you very much, America. 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 For tea last night, we had a thin piece of tinned meat, one inch long. The taste and smallness of these things does terrible things to us. Really, we don't know if it's better to go without that small taste or not, as it's so tantalizing. But for today's lunch, we had a spoonful of salmon on our rice, and that flavoured the rice right through. We'd already had a king's breakfast with real milk on our rice porridge. We now realise how bitter soya bean milk is. We also had our jam ration, a teaspoonful. How different it tasted from the brew we make from cast-off lime skins, which we call marmalade, or the jam we make from banana skins, which is like eating stewed shoelaces. With all the excitement yesterday, getting our precious rations from the Red Cross boxes, I forgot to write up our new duty. In the morning, three truckloads of heavy sacks of rice arrived. Oh, I do love...
like to be beside the seaside. Oh, I do like to be beside the seaside. Oh, you sound very gay, Shorty. Uh, (laughs) It's not that, Jeff. I'm just going to slosh some water around to clean up the bathroom a bit. I like appropriate music. Oh, you are as silly as Shorty. (laughs) Jeff, Jeff and Shorty. Hello. Yes, Mitz? I'm sorry to tell you, too, I have an extra job for you. Uh Oh, think nothing of it, Mitz. We've got nothing to do. Much. <laughs> what is it, Mitz? Well, three truckloads of rice have arrived. We've been told we're to unload it and carry it into the old garage down the road. I've put you two and Mavis Hannah on the first squad. Oh, well. When do we start? Now. They're waiting. we better get a move on, then. Where's Mavis? On her way over to the guard hut. You go on. I'll tell the others which squad they're on. Hang on, Jeff. I'll get up on the truck for a while now. You do a spell of carrying. Right. Wait till I get down. Oh, that was a bright idea, rotating like this. At least it gives all our muscles a workout. Really? Yes. Can you get a grip on the corners, dear? Yeah. I've got it. Push it off. Oh, oh. Uh, oh this is a bit much. I'm getting these sacks. Wait a minute. Oh. Right out to the garage. <laughs> this lot isn't ours, I bet. No. Oh. It's for a rainy day. Oh. For the nips, I'll bet. Oh, it's about 200 bags of it. Oh. Here we are. You back in, Shorty. Yeah. We'd better put this right at the back. Uh, oh. 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 Yeah. oh. Gee, but they're heavy. It's all very well to have to unload and carry yeah. our own rice. This is a bit much having to lug and store it for Tojo. Uh, especially when dear little Tojo is sitting around in the shade watching us. And smoking our cigarettes. Yes. Next bag already. <sighs> My, this is exhilarating work. Oh, what's bitten Mavis for Pete's sake? There's a nip standing right beside the lorry. Oh, well. Yes, Mavis. It makes you feel all turned up as if you had a massage. Yes. <laughs> massage with a steamroller. Right, girls? Ready for this one? Yes. Oops, wait a bit. Ah, oh, there, that's it. Oh, I nearly dropped it. Oh, push it off, Mavis. Oh, hang on, Shorty. You're not as good as Mavis at getting the bags off the track. Don't push so hard. Because on top of us, we'll be squashed. Sorry. Gosh. Uh, I wonder when our relief comes. Oh, I don't know. Better just keep on, I suppose, until we're told to stop. Oh, I can't go much more, Jeff. I, I can hardly stagger on my feet. I feel as if I'm going to faint. Don't you dare, Mavis. Oh. Wait until you're out of sight of the Jeffs. Well, what's up? Mavis feels faint. Oh. Here, lean against the lorry around this side. Oh. oh. I must admit my legs feel as if they're made of spaghetti. Yeah. Oh, here comes Mitz. You nearly dead? Yes. Oh, it's appallingly heavy work, Mitz. Mavis feels a bit faint. Oh. Well, take her back to the hut, Jeff. Right. Three more of us will take over now. Oh, look at those little horrors sitting there loving yeah. this. They're smoking our cigarettes, too, just to make it worse. Cheer up. Looks as if it'll rain and we'll be able to have a shower later on. Now, where are the other two? Oh, what a day. But that shower was good. Who's next for the shower? Oh, me, Shorty. Well, you'd better hop under it then, Mitz. There's a rush on. Right. Hey, I've just been told the most fascinating thing. And what's that? Now, I can't stand any more shops. Oh, it's nothing like that. It's just that some of the women who are unloading the rice were given a present by the Japs. And you don't call that a shock? (laughs) What did they give them, Shorty? Well, they waited till they were absolutely staggering with weariness, then called the job off and presented them with a couple of tins or something and patties, something or other. Sounds like grass. Patty de foie gras. Yeah, that's the stuff. What is it, Jeff? Oh, I've never had any. Oh, is it, it's made of goose's livers. Oh. Well, well, they got that. Where in the world did that come from? <laughs> That's the ironical part of it. It was taken out of our Red Cross boxes. Oh, how too, too kind of them. One of the Indonesians who go in and took the tojo told us that there are dozens of tins of butter, <laughs> cheese and milk and thousands of peppermints in the Jap kitchens. They came from the boxes, too. Saving little mongrels. I hope it chokes them. Oh, it's good to hear the rain. I hope it keeps up. 
Well, if you want to hear the latest gossip and rumors about the place, go and stand in line for a shower. Hey, Mitz, did you hear about the pet eat of foie gras? I did. Darn hide. Well, what else, Mitz? Well, the war with Germany is almost over, and the Allies are fighting on German soil at last. I wonder. Hey, what's the date? October 2nd. Why, Jeff? Well, we should make a note of the dates and so on when these wild rumours start. Then we could check them when we get home and see how many of them were true. Listen, when I get home, I'm going to be too busy filling up with food and catching up with lost time to be checking on dates. <laughs> There's only one date I'm interested in, and that's the day we get out of here. Well, I'll just have to note them in my diary. Then I can check on them at leisure. Oh, and another thing I want to put in my diary. A few of our recipes. Now, why would you want those once we get out of here, Jeff? Well, they're our most treasured possessions. I'd like to keep them. Well, now, let's think. There's the potato chips. Cut cucumber and banana skins very finely. Fry in a little oil till crisp, then sprinkle with salt. Yes. And uh, what about that uh, anchovy paste? Made out of fish bones and a bit of palm oil. That's not bad. <laughs> Seasoned duckling is best, I think. Hey, it's no good telling me now. I'll have to write them down. I know some of them, but if I get stuck, I'll ask for them. Oh, dear, talking about those things has made me hungry. I have a nice long drink of water, Mavis. Then we'd better get on with some work. After all the talk about food, it was just as well that Jats brought in the remains of our Red Cross boxes. I think it saved our sanity. I'm going to keep most of my cigarettes in case of emergency. They're good to barter with. But now, I'm going to find me a quiet spot and relax with the first decent cigarette I've had in years. The dentist came today and for the first time actually did some work. He usually comes, has a look at one or two patients, and then says, Nanty, Nanty, which means wait, and then disappears. We've been waiting for a long time. Most of us have quite a lot of dental work to be done, some more serious than others. Blanche, for instance, has had unending trouble with her teeth, and it has affected her ears. Today, when we were told the dentist was coming, all those needing attention had to line up outside the shelter shed, and once you got into line, there was no coming back. Hello, Jeff. Oh, you Are you getting in line for the dentist? No, I only. I'll put up with it until next time. I haven't got much to be done, and I shouldn't think Pie Face will get through the crowd that's waiting for him. There's Blanche down the head of the line. Poor thing. She couldn't wait to get something done. Hey, isn't that Rita leaving the shelter hut hmm? now? Yes. Poor thing. She must have had a tooth out by the way she's holding her face. I, I can't imagine what sort of surgery they have set up. It would be pretty rough, I bet. I don't see how they do any fillings. Perhaps they're just putting dressings in the worst cavities. Jeff, Rita seems to have the staggers. Oh, there goes Blanche in now. <coughs> Poor old thing. <coughs> Hope you can do something for her. She's really in agony. What are you having done, Ioli? Well, if he ever gets to me, I've got quite a bit to keep him busy. I'll go over and see if Rita's all right. Ioli! Ioli! Hello? What's the matter? You've got to get out of this line. What? Don't go to the dentist. Why, Jeff, what's the matter? I've just seen Rita. She's in a terrible state. This little monstrosity that calls himself a dentist is not bothering to do any fillings or dressings. He's just yanking their teeth out. Good heavens, not if they only need filling, surely. And not only that, he's removing teeth without any anesthetic. Oh, no. Has Blanche come out yet? Uh, uh, not yet. We're, we're not supposed to leave the line once we've got into it. Where's the guard? Uh, down near the shelter shed. Oh, yes, I see him. Well, if he turns away, just step out and talk to me, and we'll both move down the line talking to people and wait for Blanche. Right. You keep your eye on the guard, then, and, and tell me when. Oh, not yet. He's looking right this way. Uh -huh. Wait a bit. Now, quick. Right. Uh, let's stroll down the line. Poor Blanche. If he's really extracting teeth like that, she'll be in a frightful state. There she is. Come on. 
Blanche! Blanche, over here. She's walking over to the Dutch lines. Over here, Blanche, this way. What? Blanche, you're walking over this way. You don't want to go over there. We'll take you back to the hut. What did that swine do to you? He took a tooth out. He broke it and then he chiseled the wrist. The rest of it out and off. He didn't use any anesthetic, Blanche. There's still some there. I, I couldn't stand it anymore. <laughs> Come on out. We'll get you back to the hut. How is she, Jeff? Oh, she's gone off to sleep. She was in terrible agony. I gave her a salt water mouthwash. Nothing else we could do for her. <sighs> well, um, I'm afraid she's got to be woken up. Woken up? What in heaven's name for? Our fat wants all the dentist victims outside the guardhouse at once. But what for, Shorty? I don't know. They've got to go. Well, couldn't Mrs. Hinch tell our fat that the people who attended the dentist are in too much pain to be standing around the guardhouse? I don't think so, Jeff. It's an order. You know what'll happen if we don't obey. Jeff, Jeff, Blanche, you'll have to go to the guardhouse. Our fat wants everyone there immediately who went to the dentist this morning. I know. Shorty's just told me. Oh, oh come on. we better wake her up. We'd better take her over. I don't think she'd make it under her own steam. I'll wake her. I hope the day will come when these little buzzards get repaid for their sadism. And I hope more than anything that I'm there to see it. Come on, old thing. Look, we're going over with you. Well, what does he want us for? Oh, Haven't dear. they done enough? Here, Blanche, you better have this. Uh, it's only a bit of rag, but it's uh, clean. In case you start bleeding again. It's never really stopped. Well, we'd better get going. Our fat is as drunk as a bottle and not in a very good mood. Come on, Blanche. Okay. Shepard. 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 Hey, yourself, you little boon. Shepard, I stray. Damn. Silence for our fat. He is about to speak. Oh, my dear, that chief. Jujun. Wakayo. Ah, no. Shiro. Okoro. Kokaga. The gift of no one can so ni omaya ga atta tameda. So when the nonni omadachi no naka ni wahashi on a yatakoto, in itashiti or ay natito or munto or ito no makata. Rai giga kaida for a no monte no hoki da. So when I am like a drunken sailor, Minatone he book a teki, Yaronka shamitishi iro. What in the name of all that's wonderful is he burbling about? I don't know and I don't care. I only know I can't stand here much longer. Our fat kept those poor souls standing for over an hour while he talked on and on. It appeared he was lecturing them because nobody had said thank you to the dentist for the work he'd done. As if anyone could thank him for butchering them. Roasting in hell is far too delicate a punishment for these brutes. 15th of October, 1944. At last we've moved back to Mantok. We are now retracing our steps. Only Singapore, and then we're back where we started. It was our cooking day on Wednesday the 5th. We were having our lunch when one of the guards came in. How's Blanche, Jeff? I haven't seen her since yeah. this morning, Ioli. Her mouth had stopped bleeding. She's still in a great deal of pain. Oh, I'm just as hungry now as I was before I ate that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Poor old Shorty. We never seem to be able to fill you up. Damn. 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 Oh, now what? Come on, Australia. Piggy. Di sato yamka mantak. Great. Ada siap. Do jom. Do jom. Wow, what do you know about that? 
two hours. We leave for Montauk in two hours. Well, we'll have to get a move on. Thank heaven we're getting out of this at last. I wonder if we're all going together. Well, what's happening? Look, Jeff, all I care about is we're getting out of here. Well, I'm going to tell Blanche. This will cheer her up no end. We better get our cooking utensils sorted out first. Have you finished your meal, Ioli? Yes, I'm ready to start. Fine. Look, if we get all our stuff and stack it outside, a few of us can pack it while the rest sort and carry. We all started to work like beavers, and well before our time limit had everything organized. Then we were told that eight of us Australians were to go with an advance party of 40 British as kitchen staff. This was the first split of our 32 sisters. We wanted to keep together and move together, but we didn't have any say in the matter. Eight of us had to go with the first group. I don't like this being separated business at all. Nor do I, Shorty. The thing is how we decide which eight are to go. We better draw straws. Blanche, what are you doing here? Go back to the hut at once. I'm sick of lying over there thinking about my own troubles. You've got enough to do, so I thought I'd come over and give a hand. All right, but look, you sit over there and keep quiet. I'll do that. You start bending over to do things, you'll probably start your mouth bleeding again. Yes, that's okay. right, Blanche. Now, you sit over there and give us moral support. All right. Well, Blanche is right. I suppose the best way would be to draw oh, straws. Yeah, I suppose so. Anyway, Mitz will probably work it out. Dear heaven, did you ever see such upheaval and muddle? Yeah. So much fussing about. Oh, We're bad there. enough, but have you had a look at the Dutch? Gambling about their lives like motherless lambs. Confusion is right. Yeah. Oh, they're so excitable. They get into such a terrible fantod. Oh, here's another lot of stuff. Oh, good. Oh, oh it's hot. Oh, the noise in there of everybody scrambling for pots and pans is frightful. If you dump yeah. some of those over there, Ioli, I can pack them into this big tin. Okay, Blanche, next lot. Back to the fray for another load. Oh. Well, that's that lot fixed. Now, how are we going? Oh, pretty well. One good thing, it won't take us long to pack our personal belongings. Oh, I don't know. My Paris models need care and thought. If they're not folded properly, I'm liable to find when I get them unpacked that they're full of creases. Oh, that'll be a pity. You mustn't lose that suave, svelte look. <laughs> I don't know about that, Blanche. I can't afford to lose anything. <laughs> oh, don't make me laugh. It hurts. <laughs> Finally, everything was more or less sorted and packed, and we were ready. Of course, we had to sit and wait for hours until we began to think that this was another false alarm, and we'd be told to unpack again. It appeared that we were waiting for ship transport, but finally, after leaving our most important things behind us because we were told we had too much to take, we were packed into lorries, and we left at 6.15 p.m., just as darkness was falling. Listen again for a further episode of this true story of Australian women at war. White Coolies is based on the diary written secretly in a Japanese prison camp by Sister Betty Jeffrey, especially adapted for radio by Gwen Friend, and produced by Fifi Banbard for Australasian Radio Productions.